March 19th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, John chapter 10 from the New Testament. I tell you the solemn truth, the one who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in some other way as a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the door is a shepherd of the sheep. The doorkeeper opens the door for him and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought all his own sheep out, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they recognize his voice. They will never follow a stranger, but will run away from him because they do not recognize the stranger's voice. Jesus told them this parable, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So Jesus said to them again, I tell you the solemn truth, I am the door for the sheep. All who came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters through me, he will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come so that you may have life and may have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not a shepherd and does not own sheep, sees the wolf coming and abandons the sheep and runs away. So the wolf attacks the sheep and scatters them. Because he is a hired hand and is not concerned about the sheep, he runs away. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not come from the sheepfold. I must bring them to and they will listen to my voice so that there will be one flock and one shepherd. This is why the Father loves me, because I lay down my life so that I may take it back again. No one takes it away from me, but I lay it down of my own free will. I have the authority to lay it down, and I have the authority to take it back again. This commandment I received from my Father. Another sharp division took place among the Jewish people because of these words. Many of them were saying, He is possessed by a demon and has lost his mind. Why do you listen to him? Others said, There are not the words of someone possessed by a demon. A demon cannot cause the blind to see, can it? Then came the feast of the dedication in Jerusalem. It was winter and Jesus was walking in the temple area in Solomon's portico. The Jewish leaders surrounded him and asked, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus replied, I told you and you do not believe. The deeds I do in my Father's name testify about me. But you refuse to believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice and I know them and they follow me. I gave them eternal life and they will never perish. No one will snatch them from my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one can snatch them from my Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The Jewish leaders picked up rocks again to stone him to death. Jesus said to them, I have shown you many good deeds from the Father. For which one of them are you going to stone me? The Jewish leaders replied, We are not going to stone you for a good deed, but for blasphemy, because you, a man, are claiming to be God. Jesus answered, is it not written in your law, I said you are gods? If these people to whom the word of God came were called gods and the scripture cannot be broken, do you say about the one whom the Father set apart and sent into the world, you are blaspheming because I said I am the Son of God? If I do not perform the deeds of my Father, do not believe me. But if I do them, even if you do not believe me, believe the deeds, so that you may come to know and understand that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Then they attempted again to seize him, but he escaped their clutches. Jesus went back across the Jordan River again to the place where John had been baptizing at an earlier time, and he stayed there. Many came to him and began to say, John performed no miraculous sign, but everything John said about this man was true, and many believed in Jesus there. God, I think whether we are believers and children of yours or whether we are unbelievers and seeking answers, no matter what, there are times when confusion sets in. Um, 
I know I can speak for me that things get overwhelming. I let too much of the world in. The things that are of the world in uh, that really just cloud my judgment and cloud my judgment of being a Christian and a follower of yours. I'm just being honest. But I love this part of John uh, chapter 10, right around verse 38, 37, where it says, If I do not perform the deeds of my Father, do not believe me. But if I do them, even if you do not believe me, believe the deeds, so that you may come to know and understand that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. And I think about that a lot, that sometimes we pay attention to so many other things. Instead of going to you first with issues we have, we go to friends, which cloud the issue. Instead of going to you first, we might turn to our favorite book that's something about you. Um, instead of turning to you, we might go to YouTube and look up all of our favorite Christian songs. And it doesn't mean those things are bad. It just means that we need to turn to you and remember that your deeds, the factual parts that we know from your person and from the words that you've given us, those are the things we need to remember. They have never changed. They will never change. You have always loved us. You will always love us. You have always forgiven us. You will always forgive us. You have always shown incredible grace and mercy to us, and you will continue to do those things. Most importantly, you have always been faithful to us. You will continue to always be faithful to us. None of these in the entire history of the Bible have ever been broken. So if we go back to what is true, if we go back to your word, if we go back to what is in the Bible and exclude all of these other filters, even as well-meaning as our friends are, as amazing as some of these books are written by Christian writers, and as uplifting as some of these songs are, we need to go back to your word. We need to remember what is factual, not our perception of it, not our version of it, not seen through filters of this world, but what you have told us. Because if we go back to your words, everything else falls away. Our focus then becomes on your words and everything else, all the confusion just falls away from the situation. Doesn't mean that the situation that we're dealing with becomes good <laughs> at that time. It simply means that we can now deal with it in the correct way in understanding that you are so consistent, you are so perfect, you will never ever fail us. You will never give us up and you will continue to pursue us. And these are things that we should hold on to above and beyond anything that we hold on to in this world. God, even when my faith falters, and I think pretty much everybody who's ever lived their faith at some times had, has faltered. Otherwise, <laughs> thinking that they're not walking a very strong walk with you. Their faith has faltered. Even when my faith falters, I need to go back to what I know is factual. And remove everything else that is a feeling, an emotion, a situation, a person, a book, a song. And just go back to the factual part of who you are. And then... The faith in our relationship cements itself and I can move forward. God, I ask for forgiveness for those times where my faith is lacking. But I also know sometimes when I go through some of those learning adjustments in our relationship, that there's some of my biggest growth times in learning who I am as your child. So I thank you for letting me go through those situations and for showing me more importantly the steps to come out of them. But help us to remember always, we don't need to pay attention to the world. We don't need to pay attention to all the filters. We don't need to go looking beyond anything except for our relationship with you when we need to deal with something. It is just all about you. In your son's name we pray. Amen.